Okay, so um, first off, we're just going to kind of talk about uh, finding your topic. Now, if you're already here, you may already be thinking about the podcast. So you may already kind of have in mind what you're going to do, but some of you may not. Some of you may be starting completely from scratch. So one thing you need to think about is, is the market already saturated for that topic? So right now, true crime is just completely saturated. I love true crime podcasts, but I have probably about a dozen of them in my queue that I rotate through and listen to. Um, so what are you going to do to make your podcast stand out? To make it so that uh, people can find you, that they want to come listen to you. Why should they listen to your true crime podcast over any of the other millions of them that are out there? And so it's okay if you pick a topic that's already in a saturated market, but you have to find a way to uh, separate yourselves from everyone else. So, for example, there are um, a couple podcasts I listen to, one's called Moms and Murder. And it's uh, two mothers of young children that uh, sit there and they just discuss different true crime things. Uh, and then they kind of lighten the mood at the end and they talk about their kids and, you know, all the crazy things that they've done. Um, there's another one that I listen to called Crime Junkie that's kind of in that same vein. Um, one I listen to called Beyond Bizarre, where they actually take not just true crime, but really odd crimes like the uh, Great Maple Syrup Heist of Canada, uh, which is unusual, but a very interesting case. And so it's okay to choose a topic that's already a market that's saturated, as long as you can find a way to separate yourself from everyone else. Um, there is, uh, but you can also, of course, go with a topic that is completely off the wall and nobody's done yet. So one of my favorite podcasts is called Beach Too Sandy, Water Too Wet. And it's a podcast, it's a brother and sister that literally find really weird uh, Yelp reviews and read them very dramatically with background music and everything. And so it's just terrible Yelp reviews with people complaining about the most ridiculous things. I'm sure you've seen all those Yelp reviews before. And so that's certainly unique. They're the only ones I know that are doing that. And it caught my attention because of that. Uh, and I find it hilarious. So can you put a unique twist on your topic? Can you find something that has wide appeal? Um, obviously, going back to true crime, everybody's into that right now. It has wide appeal. Um, I listen to some podcasts on retro video gaming because that's something I'm into. Now, does that have wide appeal? Probably not. Is there a niche audience that can find that and get into that that's big enough to support the podcast? Yes. Um, so, finding kind of your niche but finding something that has wide enough appeal that people are going to actually listen to it and find it. And lastly, uh, this seems obvious, but some people miss it is, can it be done without visuals? You know, podcasting is all about sound. You can use sound effects, um, you know, dating back pre-television when we had radio programs and things like The Shadow and Orson Welles and uh, things like that, you know, you can certainly do things with sound effects and really, you know, get your, your point across, get the kind of set the mood and things like that. But there are some topics that just can't be done without visuals. If it's a really technical topic, uh, maybe it can't be done without visuals. And so you need to think about those things and, and See, can you do it without visuals? Some podcasts I listen to that have a extra component that can be visual uh, will post on their website uh, basically bonuses. So you can go look at photos or video and things on their website. And that's great. If you're super interested, you can go look at those things. But the podcast itself can still stand alone without those visuals. 
So you need to think about, can it stand alone without visuals? Can you do it with sound only? Next, you need to kind of think about your formatting. So are you going to have a single host? Are you going to have multiple hosts that talk back and forth? Are you going to have guests? Um, will it be scripted or conversational? I personally prefer more conversational podcasts. I don't want to sit there and listen to somebody reading off of a script back and forth. If I, you know, if I want to do that, I'll just turn on Netflix and watch TV. Um, so, but it's up to you and up to what you want. So, also, you need to think about how much work is this going to be? Is your topic something that's going to require a lot of research? Is it something you already know about and you can sit there and just talk off the cuff about? Or is it something you're going to have to each week or however often you do your podcast? Are you going to have to go and research, you know, the latest stuff, what's happening, um, and put a lot of time in like that? And that's fine if you need to put a lot of time in. Uh, but are you willing to do that? Are you willing to put that time in? Do you have the time to put in? I know most people work 40 plus hours a week. And so are you going to be able to do that in addition to this? And then also you need to think about consistency. Uh, being consistent with your releases is how people find you and start listening to you. So, for example, I know that the podcast Crime Junkie that I listen to releases every Monday morning. So I know that on Monday morning when I get to work, I'm going to be able to put on that podcast as I work. Um, you know, so if you have a set time, it doesn't have to be weekly. There are podcasts I've listened to that are monthly. But it is best if you can set a set release date and time so that your audience knows when that's going to pop up and when it's going to be there. Like anything else, you also need to think about marketing though. So who's going to be your target audience? Uh, maybe this is an academic type podcast and your target audience is, you know, other academics or students or people who might be interested in whatever field of study you're in. Maybe it's something non-academic and maybe you're looking for people who are interested in, you know, video games or true crime or whatever. So you need to know who your target audience is. Are they young? Are they middle age? Are they old? Is Are we talking Gen X, Gen Z? What, what are we talking here? And that will help you know how you're going to need to market it, where you're going to need to be sharing uh, your podcast and posting links and things like that. Social media obviously is a big component to getting the word out about anything. And so you need to think about going back to who your target audience is, what social media are they using? So if, for example, uh, I'm 31, and if you're wanting to hit somebody in my age range, uh, we use Facebook and Twitter. Uh, my student workers who are 18, 19, 20 years old, they don't use Facebook and Twitter. They use Instagram. If you want to find them, you've got to get on Instagram. And so just knowing your audience and knowing where they're going to be and where you can promote your podcast at so that they will see it is a big deal. A lot of you here are university related folks. So is your podcast going to be university related or is it going to be personal? If it's university related, then obviously through the university, there are channels that you can promote it through, OPA, different social media channels and things with the university. If it's personal, obviously you can post it on your, your own personal social media and things like that. And then you need to think about kind of your branding. So in order to kind of become a thing, you need to think about uh, something that's going to be recognizable. So can you come up with a logo? Uh, do you have a certain phrase maybe that you use? And it doesn't even have to be intentional. So uh, in one of the one of the uh, 
true crime podcast I listen to, their phrase is, it's never a mannequin. Talking about, you know, people always think that, oh, that's a mannequin. It turns out to be a, a body. And so they've made t-shirts that say, it's never a mannequin. Um, you know, and so things like that. It can be things that are just off the cuff that you wind up using over and over that kind of become a catchphrase that you can use to market yourself and set yourself apart. Because people see, oh, it's never a mannequin, and they go, what, you know, what does that mean? You're wearing a t-shirt says it's never a mannequin. And then you go, oh, well, it's from this podcast I listen to, this true crime, and, and the lady always says, because, you know, people see a body, and they're like, oh, it's just a mannequin. It wouldn't be a dead body, right, out in wherever. And, but it's never a mannequin. So... These things um, are all going to help with your marketing and branding. So are you going to do merchandising? If you start getting bigger, you know, you can do t-shirts and different merchandising. There are places like Zazzle that will do print on demand where you can upload, you know, your designs or whatever, and people can just go and purchase from there, uh, and you get a cut of that sale. And, of course, you could go locally and have stuff printed up if you really wanted to or whatever. But are you going to do that? Or are you going to get that into it? Um, because those things, merchandising and all that, it's all marketing. Um, because if somebody sees my T-shirt that says Crime Junkie, they're going to go, what does that mean? And I'm going to go, oh, it's this, this great podcast that I listen to. And so it's all about marketing when it comes to that sort of stuff so that you can set yourself apart and get people to see your podcast or listen to your podcast. So once you have your podcast, you've got your idea, you've got your marketing and all that together, you've even recorded it. So now you've recorded it, great, what do you do with it? So now we're going to talk about publishing your podcast. So there are a world of, if you just start Googling, different uh, services that will publish your podcast for you. There's one I like called Anchor.fm. And basically, they will allow you to advertise. They will match you up with advertisers. Uh, they will give you, you know, they take a cut of the advertising. They'll give you a cut of the advertising. They will push it out to the different uh, podcasting apps where people can download it and things like that. So if you want to go that route, things like that, make it very turnkey and easy. If you're willing to give up that little bit of revenue for less work. Um, so there's options like that out there. There's a million of them if you just Google them. That's just one in particular that I like. And, you know, in terms of advertising you need to think about how you're going to support this so if you're using a university related podcast maybe you can't advertise products on it uh, because we can't promote different you know products and things like that but if this is a personal podcast then you know maybe you do advertising to get a little bit of revenue um and you Everything you can think of, if you've watched YouTube or listened to podcasts, they do advertising for everything you can think of, from online therapy to VPNs to, you know, Manscaped, um, razors to basically anything you could possibly think of, people will advertise for. And so you need to think about, uh, will these advertisements be something that will interest your audience? Because if they're not, and your advertiser isn't getting sales from it, then they're probably not going to continue to advertise with you, right? And then also, you know, you don't want to be promoting stuff that people just aren't interested in. And you also want to think about, uh, you know, you don't want to promote something that you personally uh, have a problem with, right? Like, uh, if it's something that for whatever reason you have a problem with that product, you know, morally, ethically, whatever, then you need to think about that and think about what you're advertising for. So 
once you kind of have this all put together, uh, there's some places that you need to make sure you have your podcast available at. And many of these turnkey things will do the major places for you. If you do it uh, yourself and just use a, the RSS feed, then you know you need to make sure you have it available on at least Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Stitcher, and Spotify. That was Apple, Google, St Stitcher, and Spotify. Uh, the most popular platforms that people get podcasts on. Now, there's a lot of others. There's, you know, Podbean and Overwatch and all these other little small ones that you can put it on. And if you want to put it on all those, that's great. You know, more ears. Um, but you need to make sure you're at least hitting the big ones. And so the places like Anchor FM will go ahead. They'll give you a list of hey, we push it out to, you know, this this list of 10 podcasting apps, and then they'll give you an option. They'll say, here's your, your what's called an RSS feed, which is just a link they provide you, and say, if you want to put it on others, here's your feed, you can go put it on others. And then you can take that link and go to these different apps. They each have a different process, but you usually typically just fill out a form with them, uh, with the name of your podcast and all that stuff and give them that link and they'll put it up on their uh, app, uh, assuming you pass their vetting process, which is usually not, you know, anything major as long as you're not doing something offensive. Um, so those are kind of going to be your, but those are going to be your big ones, Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, that you need to absolutely make sure that you're on. There are some people who uh, choose to film as well with their podcast. So you can go on YouTube and look, and there are people just sitting at a desk in front of a microphone. And that's typically what they're doing is they have a podcast, but they also film it and then put it up on YouTube. Um, you can choose to go that route if you want. It's basically extra ears on your topic, uh, but you're also kind of fragmenting your audience. And so you need to think about how much work that's going to be to go and also put it up on YouTube every week and also check your comments and are you going to be interacting with them? Or are you going to turn off comments and all that sort of stuff? So there's a lot of different options there. Are there any questions so far? So there's obviously uh, some equipment that you're going to need to be able to create a podcast. So in the digital media center uh, here in the library, we have that equipment available to you for you for use. And in the uh, media center we have, and I'm going to share my screen to show you, um, we have a uh, an audio mixing board. So uh, this is the mixing board that we have available. And this is a Zoom L8, uh, Z-O-O-M L8. You can Google it and it'll pop up everywhere. And this allows you to do what's called multi-track recording. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but that's very important. And uh, so this is a very nice, this runs about uh, 350 to 400, um, but we have this available for use in here and we can help you. I know it looks intimidating, but it's not nearly as intimidating as it looks. And so we have staff members here. If you come during the day uh, before five o'clock, between eight and five, then we can certainly sit down with you and help you and get you comfortable with it. Uh, we also have available in here uh, two microphones, and so two microphones will obviously allow you to have your host and a guest or two hosts or whatever. Um, the microphones are good quality. 
uh, they are, I believe, Audio Technica. I would have to look to make sure, but we made sure that we got good quality microphones. And then we also have sound dampening in here um, to keep it from echoing, to keep the sound from bouncing back off the wall. So you can buy all those things and put something together for, you know, four or $500. That's a decent thing. Uh, or you can come use our stuff. Like I said, it's for free. Uh, and there is a question in the chat says, would it be possible to have another person recording with you at a separate location? Like when you're interviewing or have multiple hosts that aren't in the same location. And uh, yes, we actually, with this board that we bought, the Zoom board, um, you can actually jack a cell phone into it if you wanted to do a phone interview or something of that nature. Um, there are other ways that would get more complicated if somebody has like their own nice podcasting set up and say they're in another state. You can get audio from them and edit it together. That gets a little more complicated. But if you're just wanting to do something where, say, you interview somebody over the phone or something like that, um, we can jack a cell phone into this board and do interviews and things that way and record it straight in their software. Um, so, you know, the, the question uh, some people ask is, well, you know, I'm going to do this. Should I go out and buy, you know, all this equipment? And I'm kind of a gear nerd. I like to buy new gear. Uh, my bank account does not appreciate that. But um, so I err on the side of buying things, but I know I'm going to use it. And so if this is something that you are just starting, just getting into, you know, I would recommend come over to the library and try it out and do an episode or two and see if this is something you're actually going to stick to before you go and put $500 into equipment. Um, but also not only see if it's something you're gonna stick to, see what you like. You know, you can come and check out our equipment and if there's something that you like about our equipment, then you can, you know, make sure that what you buy has that. If there's something you don't like about it, then you can make sure that what you buy is a little different. And so I think this is a great resource for people to be able to come and use and be able to do that. Um, and finally, software. So what sort of software are you going to use? We have two software pieces of software available here in the Digital Media Center in the AV Studio for use. Um, the first one we have is Audacity, A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. That is an open source software. If you Google it, you can download it for free. And it's great if you're going to do just say a single voice and uh, you're not wanting to do multiple people at once. It's super simple to use. There's a giant red record button, a giant square for stop. It's it's pretty much foolproof. Um, but if you want to do something with multiple people, you're going to need a little bit of your software. And so we have a software called Adobe Audition. And so I'm about to, I'm going to pull that up and share my screen so you guys can see Adobe Audition. Okay, so this is Adobe Audition. And I know it looks kind of scary. Um, but it's actually pretty simple once you get into it. And this is certainly something that we can help you with and schedule an appointment with you and show you how to use it. But I'm just going to kind of go through a little bit uh, at the beginning. So when you open up the software, this is the way it's going to look. And so you'll want to go to File, New. And for a podcast, what we're going to do is call a multi-track session. Uh, now, multi-track session just means that you can record audio separately. So if you've got two people talking, you can record both of those people independently so that you don't have to mix it and just that be it. You have a lot more control. And so I'm just going to come in here and name this one workshop and put it on my desktop. There's some templates you can choose from. 
Uh, there's different ones. Obviously, podcast is what we're going to use right now. And I'm just going to OK, and this is going to pull up. And so right now, uh, what you'll see here in the center is these are your tracks. Um, and so you basically come in here, and if I'm the host, I'm going to come in here and tell it, that I'm the host. And so my microphone, if I click on this, this is your input. Um, and I'm always going to use stereo sound so that it's in both the ears. Uh, I know that this is where my microphone is. It's on this input blend. Now, whatever your system is will probably be different, but on this setup. And then right here is the output. This is where I want it to go to. You always want it to go to your master. Um, there are some, some circumstances you would want something different, but for our purposes, for what we're doing, you want it to go to your master. And then right now, this is ready to record my voice. And so if you see this little R right here, if I click that, that will essentially arm the track. And now you can see it moving as I'm talking. So if you don't see it moving, you've done something wrong, you don't have your input or something right, or something's wrong on the board, and we can certainly help you figure that out. But now I can come down here to the bottom and hit record. And as I'm recording, you'll see it move. Um, I can make this a little bigger so y'all can see more what it's doing right there. Um, so now I have that. And so I'm gonna hit stop. So there is what I just recorded. Now, if I was interviewing somebody, I could put them on the second uh, mic over here. I could add sound effects down here, wherever I wanted to. I have a whole section where I can add music. And by having these all separated on what they call multi-track, this allows me a lot of control. So if my music is too loud, I can lower it. If my my voice is louder than the person I'm interviewing, I can lower my voice or raise their voice. And so there's a lot of different tweaks and things I can do in here. In that lib guide is a um, guide to using Adobe Audition. Uh, I'm also going to be doing a video on it. I haven't put that out yet, but that will be available on our YouTube channel. And then, of course, also, uh, while we're here, while staff members are here during the day, we're more than uh, happy to come help you and show you how to use the software. And so I know, like I said, I know the software looks scary, but once you get into it, it's not nearly as hard as you think it is. So once I'm finished, so let's just say I'm finished with my podcast, I've interviewed my person, um, all I do is go to file, uh, export, and then I do this multi-track mix down, and I want to export everything, so the entire session, and then I can give it a name, I can tell it where I want it to save to, and just okay. And then what that's going to do is that's going to put it all into one audio file so that you can put it there and play it as an MP3. So that is kind of, a I know, a very quick look at Adobe Audition. Um, I do want to show you uh, before, we, before we quit here, um, I am going to show you uh, Audacity. So this is Audacity that I'm pulling up. Uh, Audacity is the one that is free. Um, so right here, like I said, there is a giant red record button. Um, and now you can just see me talking, but this is only going to record one person at a time. And so, you know, it's a little harder. You can record both mics into the same track, but then you can't go back and edit them if you had one too loud or one too low. Um, so, but this one's much easier to use. So both of those are available for use here in the Digital Media Center. Um, and so, yeah, you can come by and use those anytime. You can uh, make an appointment and uh, use that resource. So that's kind of the basics of doing a podcast. Now, like I said at the beginning, uh, this is the very first time we have offered this workshop. 
So certainly if y'all have feedback, if this wasn't what you wanted or thought it should be, please let me know. Um, but before we go, are there any questions, anything I can answer for you guys? Okay, well, uh, please go uh, do that, um, that workshop survey. I'm going to recopy these links for anybody that came in late since we realize they don't pop up for everybody. Um, so please go do that workshop survey. Um, you know, go check out those links. There's the link to uh, make your appointment. Uh, yes, Katie, uh, if you would, it's much easier if you make an appointment. So that third link links you to the AV Studio page and there is a reservation button on the right-hand side. So you can certainly come in and use it if nobody's reserved it and nobody's in there, but I would recommend making a reservation just so you know that you have it available to you at whatever particular time you're willing to use it. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. And, uh, you know, let us know, uh, Mallory, if you want additional uh, instruction on how to use the software, um, I will be doing a tutorial video that will be on YouTube, but also you can come in and make, you can email me or whatever, and we can make an appointment, or you can come in and a staff member that's here uh, from H5 can help you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Oh, 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 oh.